right now I'm neck reining her. Eventually, if you rode this horse three months down the line, she'd neck rein for you too, but right now, not so much. If I don't want her to come off the rail, I bring my front, my this leg up, the other leg back, and that keeps her straight. That's exaggerated, but you see what I'm doing? Now, if I want to turn her, I brought, drop this leg back, bring this other leg forward. See my right leg here? And if she doesn't pay attention, like right there, and she, then that's exaggerated, but that's how you teach them to, to neck rein. I use my legs, and then I use the reins, because technically I shouldn't even want to touch the reins much. Whoa. And you say, whoa, first, if she doesn't stop, then you just take up the slack. You don't have to pull. And the minute she stops, let your reins go, or she'll start backing up. Just one cluck or a, with your tongue will make her go forward. Two of them is going to make her trot. If you kiss, do not kiss. That means C-A-N-T-E-R, and you will end up in a heap because it's real round and real big and kind of rough. All right? <laughs> okay. So you, that's not something you want to do with her. No. Not right now. Once again. I still consider this horse a green horse. So you're riding a green horse. Green horses are, there's a bunch of holes in their training. So the, the quieter they are, the better you are. So we try and do everything to keep them quiet and soft. When she jogs, you're gonna come up and relax and just leave just a tiny bit of slack in the reins. You're gonna hold your reins like this. And you're just gonna use your fingers to slow her down a little and then release. See, I pick them up and let them go. And pick them up and let them go. That makes her go slower. Pick them up and let them go. You see, I don't put my legs in her at all. Remember how I was telling you with Hoya how you don't want to put any leg on the horse? This horse you don't, from the knee up you use, from the knee down you don't. And the dressage people will go like, oh, but she's not a dressage horse. She, you don't want lower leg on her unless you're doing something. So when I want a neck reiner, I'm going to put my lower leg on her because I'm going to want her to turn around. And if she doesn't pay attention, I'm going to get more aggressive with my leg. As you see, that's a ball spur. It doesn't have a rowel on it. You can't hurt her. But it has a long neck on it so that I don't have to reach so far with my big old long legs like you have to try and steer them. Now she steers one way much better than the other. When you steer her, you're just going to take your two reins like this. Whoa. You want to go the other way, you're going to cheat a little and use this rein. And you see, she'll still turn. She won't do a dig a hole turn, but she'll do what you want her to do. And as you become a better rider, and you can get up to riding this one at neck reining and using your legs and all that other stuff. And that's why I was saying Eddie would help you with that because he, he steers with his leg. But if you forget, if you, uh, with your leg, if you forget, he'll still tur turn with rein. For five minutes. Yeah. And then he comes in the middle. <laughs> so what he'll do is start fading off. He'll do that side passing thing that I showed you how she goes over. Right. He'll start going over. So when you feel him doing that, you have to do just what I did. This leg up, this leg back, and that keeps him right on the rail. See? Mm -hmm. See how straight she gets? Now if I start going, uh, see? Now if I put my leg up. And this leg is back because it keeps the hip from peeling out this way. Right. You don't put your spur on, you just bring the leg up. You're threatening to, okay? And if she keeps going, then you use the spur. And with Eddie, it'd be the same way. So they're all going to be kind of, anything you ride here is trained kind of the same. It's just various levels of training. Whereas Eddie's much better trained than this horse. You don't have to get real aggressive with where you put your leg like I did with her. So you're going to just walk and jog today. So once again, she started out fast, so I pick up the reins and let them go. I pick up the reins and let them go. And then she, I picked them up too hard. So there's an example of why, of how I, I said you have to be real soft with your hands. And if I feel her starting to quit, you heard the little clucking noise I made with my tongue. Now, here's what Canner looks like. Canner. Like a clod hopper? <laughs> no, it's big and round. 
it's Vavoom. Everybody says she's got a beautiful canner. It's pretty to look at when you see it. It's just not pretty to ride. It's big and round. They're big footed horses, so they got to get up and out of their own way. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And then with her, I practice things to help keep her mind off just going around and around because she gets bored. Ooh. Over, 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 whoa. I make her get real close, because if I was going to open a gate, I'd have to be real close, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of horses don't get real close when you're doing obstacle training. You don't get real close to an obstacle that you have to pick up, then your horse isn't going to be able to, you're not going to be able to reach it. Then you're going to be leaning way over, and if the horse decides to get a wild hair, you're going to be right in, in your, in the face face first in the dirt. Mm -hmm. So always make sure you get close enough to your obstacles when you're doing obstacles and make the horse stand there for a while. Don't even try and grab whatever's on the barrel or you know how if you'll make you put on a slicker or something like that. When you're training them, just get them to go near it and then away. Near it and away and stop and rest. Whoa. With her, you know, we want her to, to do a proper turn on the haunch. She still wants to move that hip the last point. So when, you, when you're doing that, you don't want to complete the turn. At this point in time, I make her take a step forward, then complete the turn. It keeps her from taking and peeling her hip all over. And if you, once again, if you're going to do, when you get your horse, you're going to want to do obstacles. I know that's what you were, were saying you wanted to do. When you do, they've got to execute a really good turn on the haunch or they'll get out of the box. So when, when you teach a horse to turn on the haunch, what I do is I turn them into the rail back. And now she put her hip over, so no, that's not what I asked. So I put my spur on her to bring her back out. Whoa, whoa. And now I want her to turn. So here comes my spur up front, which, you know, a finished horse won't do. But you see her rear end planted and stayed planted. They have to have a pivot foot. They can't just go with their back leg. So that's why you stop, take a step back, get a pivot foot. And then she walks out of it a little, so I, that's why I give myself enough room so I can take her forward. If I were to just let her make a messy turn, here's what some people will do. They'll stop them. They'll say, I'm going to turn. See the back end go all over the place and then keep going. Oh, they didn't do that. Well, that's because you didn't set them up for it. Stop. Take a step back. Eh. She's second guessing me now. Ask her to turn, yeah. and then bring her forward when she starts to do that with the leg. Back. There, she dug a hole. And she should be able to do a 360, she's not ready yet. Nothing, Rome wasn't built in a day, that's the other thing, you pick your battles, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop her, you can go ahead and turn that camera off and I'll let you get on.